Evet, son oturma kadar. Distinguished participants who survived till the last session, we will start with the first speaker directly. Hello, everyone. I would like to thank the ones who organized this valuable Congress and the ones who participate to the session. I'll try to have a brief presentation. However, generally our activities and digital uh, solutions will be presented here. So, uh, Smart Pulse in a nutshell. We provide uh, cloud-based solutions and we focus on energy activities. The capacity that we serve uh, reach nearly 40 percent of uh, wind turbines and in digitalization for uh, WPPs we have the investment phase trading and sales phase and uh, maintenance phase the part that we give service indeed uh, digital uh, weighted services are in sales part I would like to give a couple of examples. Here in the X there is the financial impact and in Y you may see the probability. In WPP operational mistake um, possibility is higher when we compare with the other uh, power plants. The financial burden arises in wind power plants because of the volatility and as a result of market volatility and data intensive processes we see financial burden arising from forecasting errors and uh, coupled operational risks can be quite significant for wind power plants when we have an analysis to, uh, not taking the balance group into consideration. 400 million Turkish lira is the cost that we expect. This is resulting from the imbalances as we do not uh, revise them and uh, together with the synergies of balance groups we may eliminate majority of it. However, if we use a matrix which is not quite good mathematically, uh, compensation by 3% of day ahead price within YECTA. You know, there is this uh, factor J. This is, a, this is the tolerance uh, coefficient. And following YECTA, there will be no 3%. And we've uh, we will face a bigger imbalance issue, actually. How we do you have our forecasts? Day ahead forecasts are made by the companies and even during the day there could be revisions over it. And during the day, every hour's revision is made iteratively. So let's check again. You have a day ahead forecast and during the day you revise and uh, update the next hour. And when we see it, you see there is uh, the situation is getting better and the green is the generation line. This is a very specific scenario, by the way. I checked this uh, particular day, uh, nearly 50% uh, imbalance occurs uh, in the day ahead forecast, but then we decrease it to 12% during the day. But how we did it? With a digital uh, infrastructure, surely, from 52% uh, to 12% decrease. Yes, it is important, but also financial unit to back it up. And decisions subsequent to forecasts. There are three decision points. Should I buy? 
for example, because uh, my estimation forecast for production is uh, uh, generation forecast is less than the deviation, so I need to buy, but in which price, when I should uh, buy it. And there is an intensive data flow to manage that uh, procedure. There are lots of different resource companies uh, to get data, and you need to have data flow. And you need to analyze those uh, data to create a hybrid, maybe, uh, because you have a certain knowledge in your field. And then after, In order to have healthy forecasts uh, from companies, you need to submit realized data from SCADA. So uh, it means that you need to read the data of the power plants. And if there is a maintenance or if there is an error in the power plant, you need to also uh, merge this information to the data schedule. And you need to give uh, an offer to the market, and then to Teyash, I need to have uh, that much revision because of these uh, reasons. And it is not possible to have it in Excel uh, in uh, 724. So what we do, we have a cloud-based uh, software. And in this software, in the first place, uh, we read from different sources. Uh, from the anal analysis or from uh, the uh, generators and we are integrated with the forecast companies uh, we can send it back we can have their data this wasn't a huge problem in the past but during the day there is an intense data flow and every company's data uh, model or their method or technology could be different so you need to standardize, standardize uh, that uh, process and there needs to be a portal to get information from companies regarding their maintenance and then you need to merge all those information and at 2 a.m. for example you need to inform the market about your buy or sell uh, position and the automation rules could help you at that point and then uh, to Teyash you have uh, you need to declare them um, I have stated, I have declared that I will generate 52, but now I uh, can only generate uh, 39 megawatts per hour. And uh, then all those data from different sources are merged and the report should be created uh, in an analytical uh, process to have a decision-making process uh, in a healthy uh, manner and providing all these uh, to cloud-based software it is useful and uh, currently when you optimize all of it uh, you can get benefit over 30 percent uh, to eliminate all those imbalances costs etc uh, now, right now, we are serving to 83 wind power plant, and the whole technology is developed with uh, the contribution of our uh, national engineers. So, we would like to thank everyone who trusted us in that process in such a, a short time period so we do hope that we will disseminate this practice our practice in Europe as well thank you very much for paying attention thank you Önder in order to use time efficiently we will continue with the next speaker Juan Alvarez de Toledo Lopez is the manager of a business development everyone I'm Juan Alvarez de Toledo, I'm from UL, and I'm here to share with all of you the new tool of digitalization powered by UL. Uh, first of all, I would like to share with you some big numbers about uh, UL. We are a company with more than 30 years of background in the sector, composed by 500 so, uh, renewable energy experts, 
experts. So that means that we have assets um, along all our history more than 200,000 megawatts in 140 countries. And these big figures means one word, strong knowledge. Along the last year, we have performed uh, a survey among wind farm operators and owners. We asked them if they asset produce less energy than they expected. And 89% per, of the wind farm uh, who answered the survey uh, answered yes. And only 17% of them uh, recognize that they have the reasons well identified and quantified. Going deeper in these energy losses, 20% uh, of the people uh, link these losses to the lack of resource assessment. Another 11% uh, link it to the efficiency of the wind turbines, and 5% of them link it to the operation and maintenance service. 62% of these people uh, agree that these energy losses are due to a combination of reasons. A combination of reasons like uh, wind turbine efficiency, uh, wind, wind resource anomaly. Uh, think that these energy losses means a lot of money year by year during the 25 years of a, a standard wind farm. So in order to uh, answer this, this uncertainty, how, how we could increase the return of investment of the wind farms and their operations, uh, we are glad to share with you a new concept, thanks to the digitalization area, and it is the advisory monitoring. That means that thanks to the digitalization, UL is capable to offer to their clients uh, the tools developed along these 35 years of track record in the sector, taking advantage of this uh, expertise in resource assessment, wind turbine certification, wind farm design, etc. Oh. Okay. So basically, what UL want to offer to the renewable sector is the, cap the capability to categorize and calculate the losses in a uniform and real-time way. And that means money, again. Um, now I would like to share with you uh, the UL point of view regarding digitalization. And digitalization has four main pillars. The first of them is connectivity. I think that all in this uh, room agree that gathering data is essential to extract value of the asset. The second pillar is the innovation, is the capability to automate algorithms and to extract value of this data. The third one is the automatization, which means offer to their clients on a real-time basis added value. And finally, this is the decision making, the fourth pillar, the capability to support our clients in the decision making to implement new operational strategies to increase the return of investment for their wind farms. This slide represents all the value change of data. It starts in the different data sources, OEM, SCADA, MetaStations, Spot Market, many different uh, sources. Thanks to the digitalization, EUL is capable to integrate all of this data in a huge data lake where we store all our historian data. Thanks to digitalization, thanks to the technology, we are able to build relationships between different parameters, different data, to get insights and to propose to our clients market solutions to, I said it again, to increase, to reduce the gap between the energy losses expected when we develop the project and the, and the results are getting when the wind farm is operating. So now I'm, I'm glad to share with you RAM. RAM is the renewable asset monitoring platform which UL is bringing to the, to the market to open the door of the digitalization in the wind energy sector. Right now, RAM has functionalities on real-time monitoring, advanced analytics, events and alarm management portfolio statistics and reporting. This is like you could have a, a brief summary of the main functionalities of, of this new tool, which, the, which have a, a, a tap of control center, standard control center, 
the online monitoring, the capability to monitorize at portfolio, wind farm, and generation unit level of any kind of technology. Then the advanced analytics, like I mentioned before, from in UL we understand that it's essential to, uh, to get a good tool in terms of gathering data, but then you need the knowledge to extract value of this data. Then we have different dashboards, even alarms inside, and we also have the, the capability to use this tool as an offline, uh, offline analytic tool, which is really useful to compare monitor, activo, uh, monitor wind farms with uh, any other uh, wind farm you want to analyze. Finally, just uh, to share with you the benefits of using this advanced analytics. In this slide, you could see at, at the first column on the, on the left, which is the budget, is the expected energy when our client uh, develop a wind farm. On the column at the right side, we can see the actual production. This tool is capable to identify and quantify this gap of energy, these energy losses, and identify if, it, if these energy losses are due to wind, wind anomaly, to efficiency of the wind turbines, availability related with the operation and maintenance service, due to curtailments coming from the transmission system operators or any other issue. And many more functionalities are coming. As you may know, I, I'm sure you know, UL has a, a broad portfolio of services and software, and many of them will be integrated in, the, in this tool along the next year, like the loads, fatigue, damage, and real-time monitoring. And we also are working on the developing or integrating their uh, window grapher, open wind. The, the, the main goal of this platform is to be the digital tool to uh, monitor a project from their beginning, monitoring the MedMask, uh, monitoring the guarantee period, and also calculating in the, uh, at the end of the life of the wind farm the fatigue loads, and also to analyze if it's uh, suitable or not uh, the, the lifetime, a, life, a lifetime extension program. So thank you very much to the Queen, uh, Turkish Green Energy Association for the opportunity to, to share with you uh, the, our new tool. And please don't hesitate to, to contact me or, or my colleague uh, Ali if you want to get more information. Thank you. Well, we thank Juan Alvarez de Toledo for this excellent presentation. Now, şimdi Argun. And now, Argon, will you have a presentation? First of all, hello everyone. This is the last session of the day and you had the patience uh, to stay here at this hour. Uh, it is uh, your kindness actually and I don't want to bore you and I I do believe it is somehow entertaining, this new world. And above all, I would like to thank everyone who contributed to this organization. It is a great fun and it is very important for the energy sector. And uh, this is now a traditional gathering for the uh, wind uh, energy. And I do believe uh, this is an interesting topic and in order to keep you here, we are listed as the last one on the uh, last day. So I will try to keep your attention on the presentation. So today, uh, we will talk about to where we are heading in renewable energy. And we have certain concepts that we are discussing lately. Uh, but we need to define some certain values. Uh, the disruption is uh, the redefining of certain concepts. Now we are uh, in a disruption phase for a couple of uh, years and uh, in following years, uh, we will face it uh, harshly, most probably. And I will share data regarding digitalization. The digitalization concept. It is 
get uh, the world is getting complicated and energy sector gets it its share from that complication, but digitalization helps us and uh, how can we respond to these problems in a novel way with digi digitalization? Uh, I will uh, share the information in terms of pure energy, who we are. Uh, three partners who had experience over 10 years in corporate corporate companies uh, established this company and now we have reached at this point uh, uh, they have we have uh, various uh, colleagues who have uh, various backgrounds in academy and the market as well in uh, germany and in different european markets for designing of them and for the uh, operation side of them they have experience uh, active experience on those and both nationally and internationally we are involved in many networks and today's topic renewable energy and together with renewable energy there are some new challenges and opportunities surely as you see in the last decade in renewable energy both in solar and vent uh, installations there is a huge increase globally uh, to summarize uh, just in the left part uh, in china uh, 120,000 uh, megawatt uh, solar panels uh, are produced and they are turned into new renewable energy installations and wind turbine uh, manufacturers as you do know uh, there are hundreds of thousands megawatts are produced and taken into power both in onshore and offshore premises there are certain reasons behind those developments and maybe one of the most important ones is related to global climate change. We have serious concerns regarding that and global companies, the consumer companies and also in terms of states. In New York, uh, if you have followed Greta, uh, there was a spectacular performance and in Paris also there was this uh, climate uh, change convention so in hard fact part renewable energy in KPAX part there is a there is an increase it is triggered because of uh, this reason and it will continue in 2015 2005 to 6 in uh, Germany, one megawatt uh, solar uh, plant production is 5,000 uh, euro, but uh, 5 uh, million euros, but now it decreased to 80,000 uh, euro. So the cost decreased hugely. And in the installed power, there is again huge increase and we will see how it will integrate into into our lives in turkey in the first 10 months the energy is produced from renewable uh, means by 46 percent and uh, our company is also focusing on renewable energy in uh, north part of uh, Germany, TSO uh, activity still continues for that group, but uh, their renewable energy uh, percentage is uh, 76 when we compare to overall. So this is uh, very complex. And in this graph, uh, you see, we try to explain it in normal, the operators, uh, Teyash and the counterparts of it in different countries. It could be uh, the 
hydro powers or some other sources but renewable energy share increase uh, together with that increase it is now fragile and volatile because it's in na it's in its nature and uh, the management of it is getting complex and it involves much complex solutions and for the renewable energy plant number increase and climate change issues are also related to the prices uh, because the increase in renewable uh, make prices much volatile as well because it involves more than one complexity to manage. Together with renewable energy, we may list those as a new challenges into our lives and to manage that complexity. To efficiently use these new things, what can we do? In world, there are two basic issues. The first one is uh, the is having a renewable energy plants, both in solar and wind. It is like a commodity. Uh, per megawatt prices, you may see it is quite similar across the world and it is getting lower. But the second biggest issue for renewable energy is that the capacities uh, integration to this system it is much complex and it requires much more technology the use of digitalization because if we do not have them as pure energy we have uh, over 50,000 uh, deals and uh, you can't imagine the complexity without them. And the previous speakers have already stated clearly the uh, uh, real-time monitoring of them having a much reliable forecast, automated uh, trade tools and the pattern of consumption uh, integration to the system there are lots of issues and we need uh, new technologies for that how can we optimize the use of it and the renewable energy capacity that caused that complexity, how can we integrate it uh, effectively to the system and how can we get the most of it to increase our capacity? This is the uh, question. In pure energy, we have a virtual power plant system or aggregated uh, system in literature. In Turkish, we have digital power plant management uh, term for it. And we have the outages and availability uh, data. This is a niche area. And uh, this is a now a new working field for the companies. And in the last uh, years, there is uh, an impedance gained in that field. As it has been stated, if we give an example from the uh, power uh, wind power plant having real connection, having real time uh, monitoring, it is quite important because in every 15 minutes uh, the uh, generation forecast is updated. So in real-time trade, you may have a much accurate value. So you can manage the imbalances to balance 
the outages and if you need more energy you may buy it from the market in accordance with your forecast so you can minimize any imbalances And this is the complexity brought by uh, these technological improvements. Uh, surely all those updates in farming Teyash and Teyash adjusting its system, uh, its uh, planning in accordance with that. And we may have the energy uh, supply safety uh, and reporting of all those. And in that ecosystem the final aim as a as an independent operator the renewable power plants uh, incomes to increase and uh, K opex to increase this is the aim as i have stated VPP gives response to which challenges? First, to security of supply. Uh, it's uh, strengthening the hands of uh, Teyash. And the second one, enabler for financial investors targeting renewable uh, energy sources, uh, especially uh, the global investors could enter the market with that uh, tool and the third one is to increase the uh, perfection level of the plants but what is next what will be seen in the future in terms of uh, renewable energy this business model is focused on turkish market but we would like to have it in european market as well and especially for the renewable energy power plants in five years or in longer times, there could be corporate junior uh, PPA studies, renewable PPA businesses. And the expansion of renewable energy credit business lead uh, in terms of global climate change, the contribution to environment. Some companies would like to see that. This is a service uh, provided for them. In Turkey, we give uh, the first uh, renewable energy uh, deal uh, to California. And uh, in the next years, we will have more value added models, more niche, uh, much niche uh, models actually. And in order to realize all those, we will do our best. We put all our efforts to this issue. So thank you very much for your attention. And thank you very much for your kind uh, patience. That's all from my side. Ufuk, we may continue with you. Thank you. I'm Ufuk Yaman. I'm from USENSE. Energy Solutions. I would like to start by introducing myself. I graduated from Birkent University Electrical Engineering Faculty in 2010. Between uh, 2010 and 2013, I was in an international consultancy firm, and actually their service was focusing on wind energy. And uh, after that, in 2014, I was one of the founders of USANS Energy Solutions. And since then, I have been working in this industry. And actually, in 2014, I uh, actually finished my master's thesis about uh, sustainable energy in Izmir. Well, let's talk about USANS. Uh, what is uh, our definition? It's the sustainable energy solution. Actually, you, um, uh, it means that sustainable energy solutions for you. This is why the abbreviation is USENSE. And actually, from the institutions, if there is a need for renewable energy, projects we provide services in terms of engineering 
well including this energy system we have wind power solar power and we have some other technologies that are included well up to date actually in terms of wind power more than 115 we had meteorological assessment and actually in total we have 80 different projects and we evaluated uh, these projects in a bankable standard what does that mean it means that we did data processing and data collection our engineering firm is focusing on data processing and uh, data assessment we use some softwares and in the end we try to collect the wind power data and this is uh, what our experience mostly uh, focusing on well, actually, these are the services that the market needed for many years. And uh, apart from this, we have some small scale uh, projects. For example, in 2017, we had uh, WPP uh, uh, tenders. And actually, uh, for a power plant a project it wouldn't benefit from yektam and uh, actually it will be a player in the field by its own not by a, a beneficiary from yektam and it shows that the market swap price should be uh, estimated accordingly and uh, accurately this is the need in the market not just for pre-licensed projects but actually, it's needed after 10 years of a project. If there is a need for financial uh, assessment for a better forecast, it's needed. We know that a wind project uh, needs a finance support, but how can it be supported financially without the beneficiary from Yekdem? and? actually we need to evaluate lots of aspects we need to know its uh, price and we need 100% uh, of accuracy in terms of financing but it's not possible we know that in market uh, the energy generation uh, for example uh, tomorrow what will be the price of the energy tomorrow there are some softwares developed for this and actually for the energy plants that there are, are many softwares but we need high uh, accuracy rates and i think 10% uh, is not enough in terms of volatility so uh, as we are not a software firm this is not our as uh, aspect but in terms of our firm how can we benefit this accuracy we have a diagram in a wind power project this is the diagram actually in any hour of any month of a year the energy generation rate can be forecasted accurately if we measured uh, accurately in the field but actually uh, there are no accurate rates for the swap prices and this is from a PH website and since 2012 there are some uh, periods of crisis and reasons and actually from the database we can have the data and actually at first we cleared eliminated the data that we think it's not accurate as you can see on this diagram if uh, there is not a balance if there's a negative effect in terms of data we eliminated them and we also had some studies on the data sets we eliminated the problematic ones and in the end we had a data set with um, intervals with gaps inside 
and actually we had our final data. For different currencies, we can see the monthly changes or uh, it's between 2012 and 2018. Actually, we know that there are sudden uh, value losses. Actually, we can see the loss of currency in terms of Turkish lira to uh, other currencies uh, as a sudden uh, change. And on the basis of a dollar, we generally uh, have our equipments in euro, so we can have our assessment on the basis of euro annually. First one is the monthly change, and the other one is the intraday changes. As you can see, when we eliminate the abnormal years, we have much better data. In terms of uh, intraday change volatility, we have a uh, accurate trend, coherent trend. We eliminated, we did the data synthesis. And as you can see, we have volatilities in the Euro 2 between the years. And to evaluate them properly, we normalized each year in uh, their own aspect. For each year, we had diagrams, and we see the average value of the year. We uh, actually had some um, measurements and we combined the years like this because otherwise it wouldn't be significantly important. So this is uh, the diagram that we have. We eliminated 2012, for example, because it was a very unique year in terms of economy. And what are the values? If we see one, it is the average rate of swap changes. The other coefficients show that uh, hourly uh, price, show the hourly price. For example, in the morning there are red ones. We have lower coefficients, but in August we have higher coefficients. So. We also know that these values are related to the consumption habits from the consumers. And it's also related to the supply and demand. Sometimes there's an imbalance between supply and demand, and that's why we have imbalanced rates. And I think this diagram makes sense. So how do we use these uh, values? As I mentioned the previous diagram uh, about the energy generation, when we compare this one and when we integrate them, actually it's about multiplying each other. If the total value, average value, uh, it shows the coefficient rate of our field, uh, we show uh, how uh, it can be generated in a maximum level and how can it be generated in a minimum level. Actually, we have a difference uh, by 6% uh, with the evaluation of 12 different uh, wind power plant centers. In a scenario that we have multiple measurements, the difference is 2%. And in another one, when we have a yearly change, uh, it's actually below 1%. And I think it's a good sign. It's the desired level that we uh, want to have. And how can we use the results? I think this is the most important question. After YECDAM for the modeling, this is a necessary one. But we know that in 2012, we will have another tender for uh, WPPs. And we need to know which project to eliminate or which project to include. And in the combined uh, generations uh, plants, actually, 
you need to have a some certain kind of optimization and I think it will also be uh, important in this phase and actually for the financing modeling for your revenue you can use this diagram and again as you all know Yekdam has a cost on the public and there's a forecast of uh, a cost in the uh, public sector and actually public industry public uh, firms can use this diagram to have more accurate results i know that our results are not perfect um, we know that uh, there is an imbalance by one percent uncertainty by one percent how can we fix it we know that we are at the beginning uh, of this study, but I would like to share you because we are talking about digitalization. So I would like to share you some uh, studies in the literature. What are the results and actually how it reflects on our forecasts. And actually this is the model uh, that uh, I think this uh, one is the best for us. I think with this model, on the basis of model, we will have more accurate forecasts in the market. And I think we will learn more of machine learning. We will have uh, an awareness. Thank you for your attention. Our office is in Izmir, and we are waiting you uh, to be uh, our guests. Thank you. Thank you, Bora. Do you have a presentation? No, I don't have a presentation. So, what is Tarantum? What does Tarantum mean? I mean, what is the starting point of this firm? I think you are not money laundering as far as I know. So what are you doing? Well, actually, there might be some financial authorities here. So let's uh, uh, be discreet. Well, in old Italy, this is the name of a town. And what is the characteristic of this town. There are lots of mathematicians in Tarentum. And there is a, a one person called Arkitas. And actually, he uh, instructed a device that can fly by itself. It's very important because what we are doing is based on artificial intelligence. And I think it was a very ref good reflection point. Uh, and actually, the device that he instructed looked like a bird. And there is a bird called Tarantum. So we wanted to use uh, it uh, as a name of our company. And actually, as a company, what do you do? Well, differently from other uh, colleagues here, we are not just dealing with the energy sector. We are dealing with artificial intelligence. This is our uh, starting point. And actually, we know that we needed an experienced staff to focus on artificial intelligence. And we included very experienced, successful graduates in our company. And actually, we have uh, 23 people in our company. We, our office is in Istanbul Technical University. So what do we do? We need challenges in our daily practice because we have very experienced people in our company. So we are organizing some projects. Uh, we are doing some uh, forecasts uh, for Gidior in Istanbul, for example. In banking uh, industry, we did some projects on cash optimization. Actually, we are just dealing with prediction. We are dealing with forecasts. To have a better example, well, maybe uh, I have two questions for you. Uh, do you know Getir in Turkey? Uh, actually, I think you all know that. Actually, what about orders 
in Getir. What is the most important aspect of Getir that uh, affects the increase and decrease in terms of orders? Well, uh, weather is very important. But there is one thing that we couldn't uh, think of earlier. We know that people tend to order when there's a rainy day, for example. But I think uh, not just rain, but pressure uh, in the climate is also important. Well, what about pressure? What do you mean? I think uh, what is the uh, relationship? I mean, some people say that I have headaches when there is a, a pressure in the air. And I think this is an indicator why the orders are increased uh, as the climate changes. We also know Gitti uh, Gidior, and this is a website in Turkey that um, uh, people buy something online with bids. And let me ask you, for example, you write fish uh, on the search engine. What is the complementary word that comes uh, later? Well, oil might be, or uh, eating might be another option. Well, maybe if we have a, a poorly nourished child, we can write a fish oil, for example. Uh, well, we have a skirt called fish skirts. I think uh, men will not know that, but we know that the most common searched word is the fish skirt. And actually, this is uh, the prediction that we managed to do. To summarize, we are just dealing with prediction in very different aspects. So what do we do in energy industry? We have two specific products. We forecast uh, manufacturing. And we are forecasting uh, the en energy generation. And actually, we are also predicting uh, how can a turbine be impaired. Well, predictive maintenance is an uh, important concept. We know that in a uh, gas sector, we have uh, actually accurate uh, data when compared to wind and solar uh, plants. You are right. We are looking for challenges in our firm, as I mentioned. With Borusan, we had a cooperation and actually they helped us to be included in this sector. So in terms of predictive maintenance, uh, we were dealing with the wind energy. But as you mentioned, Barish, we are also dealing with other uh, industry, like in steel industry uh, and oil and gas. If we have an equipment that can impair in an unplanned way, and if it's very hard to replace, if it costs very high, and uh, then we need to have a predictive maintenance. But if the stall parts are very easy to obtain, or if you can change it very easily, or if there is a secondary equipment, then your first option might not be predictive uh, maintenance. We started with wind power, but now we are dealing with other aspects. I have another question. In wind, what are the factors that we should have maintenance on the forefront? Well, if this is a secret, don't tell us, but uh, what are your comments? Our firm is on the developing process, but we all know that in some stages, plants generate more, and in some periods, uh, plants generate less. Our systems works as such. 
it depends on the machine learning. We have two main approaches. We have supervisors and unsupervisors. In terms of supervising, we are trying to modeling the normal conditions of working in a turbine. We know that turbines work 95% of their working time. And we know that we have accurate data. And with our methods in hand, we evaluate hundreds of parameters. That's where the machine learning comes into practice. We predict their normal working lines. If it exceeds that line, we have a notification. As uh, I think the early that we can get the notification, the better our results will be. Sometimes you can say that if, uh, if my uh, generation is low, then I can wait for, for a long time. And another point is that we learn the impairments, we learn the damages. And actually, we look for the previous damages and we evaluate which parameters have changed over time. And we do trainings on our models. If we see some volatilities during normal operation, if we have some volatilities, then we have other notifications too. And I think with this one, we can change our plans. It's, it's very interesting because um, some are dealing with cash forecast, but you are dealing with corrections, not just on cash or prices. You are dealing with other things too. And actually, you need to feed the system with lots of data. So how can you reach? this data. Yes, it's not easy. In terms of digitalization, we know that there are different stages involved. As other colleagues mentioned, speakers mentioned, we need to collect data. We need to validate or eliminate data. So if we are in a cooperation with other firms, then it's very important because we will have better results. We need to have less time in terms of eliminating, because there might be a waste of time. Uh, in the scope of forecasting a generation, we have data from the customers. We have data from the previous experiences. This is our practice in terms of production management. The climate, the weather changes, I think, are the most important uh, point. And actually, we are trying to predict very uh, chaotic, very problematic systems. And that's why it's challenging. And in our practice, we looked for the optimized uh, weather uh, forecasts. And thanks to Istanbul Technical University, we know that it's one of the best uh, faculties ever. We have two uh, people in our staff from Istanbul Technical University from the meteorology department. So we estimated uh, some forecasts uh, about climate and some data comes from uh, other countries. This is a standardized one. And with this data in hand, we use different machine learning techniques. And then uh, we look for uh, the aggregation in terms of field level. And the interesting point is that in good firms dealing with this, for example, Borusan, has many forecasts from different uh, firms. They collect all of these different forecasts and they have an ultimate forecast, the most accurate forecast from these different sources. 
So getting these different sources is not that uh, problematic, actually, day by day for facilitating it uh, our, for our customers, uh, we have this data. I get uh, their forecast from three different firms, but some firms say that I don't know which one to use because there are different aspects. We know that some firms have good accuracy rates in the windy climates, for example. That's why we formulated, we automatized our uh, data collecting methods. And actually, in our uh, prediction part, vibration data is challenging because the turbine suppliers do not want to share their data. I think it's related to the financial issues and the operators, customers could not get this data, vibration data. And I think slowly, day by day, we are uh, in a process that is improving. We have a very significant data, so in order to benefit from it, we need to have an open path. Well, to be honest, we have young colleagues listening to us. so. What are your comments on machine learning in this industry? To my, I, I think before my younger colleagues, we need to evaluate ourselves as industry. So, for my younger colleagues, what can I say? Please do not say that I'm the data scientist, I use the best machine learning methods. Do not say these lines. Instead of this, please try to develop something uh, from the existent data that you have. Uh, we have lots of applications, as you can expect, and the ones that we choose are the ones that had a, has an added value, has a solution for a certain unique problem. You need to think meticulously. You need to have an added value, uh, but it's not common these days. Everyone thinks that they are data scientists, but this is not the case. To be a real data scientist is not that easy. Well, if there is a top account on the CV, is it positive? I think it's nice for them to share. If there are some GitHub uh, accounts, you need to have very clear examples. You need to have a good documentation in your GitHubs. If we have time, uh, we also evaluate the GitHub accounts. So. Are there any questions from the audience? If you have any questions, please prepare. Uh, I have two questions for Juan and Ander. Uh, actually, uh, you talked less, so I need to ask you some questions. Ander, well, we are pricing the weather. Uh, it's very interesting. So is it why digitalization is important? I mean, is it why the weather is so chaotic? So if you have any questions, you can uh, feel free to ask. But if you ask questions, you will come, uh, you will go home later than you expect. So uh, please be cautious. Well, if you asked me this question in 2010, I would say that it's not that important because in 2010, with a big German uh, firm in, term, in the energy sector, we had a risk committee and we were uh, talking about the forecasts, about pricing, and they were surprised that uh, we didn't uh, include the weather changes, wind volatilities. But at that time, uh, the installed capacity in Turkey was much lower. But forecasting the prices is uh, also about dealing with different 
time uh, periods. As Fook mentioned, they have different profilings, and in the long term, they have different data sets. But the production form is not the same when we compare to the uh, other countries. For example, in Germany, actually, uh, we see lower prices because there are lots of solar energy generation. It's very hard to predict because when we look at the previous years, it was the uh, opposite. So we need to uh, be careful of all of these. And in short term, in one in two hours, if you have higher electricity, and with this electricity, you try to sell it at a price. But this price uh, is related to the outcome of the Turkey, not just about your uh, plant. It's also related to the production form in Turkey. This, the decision-making process is very challenging. And actually, its importance is increasing day by day. So that's why we are focusing on the weather forecasts and its effect on the manufacturing. If the wind uh, speed rates for 1%, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that your generation will be affected from it. I mean, there is no certain uh, equity in here. Uh, you need to forecast the fundamental structure. Well, we had an interesting uh, publication in China. If uh, this is from American Academy of Science, it was very interesting about the circulation of the in uh, the uh, weather change in terms of industrial uh, firms, industrial uh, plants. In Turkey, I couldn't look at Bandırma region, but the main point is there are some uh, vapors from the industrial um, ones. So actually, if the industrial facilities are closed in the weekend, uh, in Monday, we see a change in the climate, in the weather. So we, in Turkey, we looked for the data set. Monday, between 4 and 7 p.m., the average generation of wind uh, is different by two uh, statistical uh, deviances. And actually, in Turkey, this is the case uh, in the uh, Monday uh, evening. And when we look at Monday, it really increases uh, during this uh, periods of time. Also, industrial facilities, uh, I think, affects it a lot. Well, we have lots of forecast firms in the wind sector. How can they be differentiated from another in the future? What are your predictions? Because we, they have same algorithms, the same data sets. So, in terms of technology in the future, how is the, your forecasts about it? Well, in terms of the of the of the future, about how the the power forecasting techniques uh, maybe improve, uh, I think that uh, gathering real time data about the availability of the wind farms could be a really good point for starting. Uh, as as far as I understand the forecasting techniques, in one hand we have the the weather forecasting models, there are many different of them, and the combination of them uh, makes good, good results in terms of 
weather, weather forecasting. But on the other hand, it's critical to, to have vision, to, 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 to know what is happening in the wind farm, because if suddenly a couple of wind turbines have to stop due to maintenance issues, your forecasting immediately is going to be broken down. So I think that in terms of improving the forecasting uh, techniques in order to uh, go further in terms of renewables integration, uh, the availability, the reliability of real-time data is becoming critical in, 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 any, an, in any kind of sources, weather and uh, wind farms uh, availability. Okay. Do you think that there are fundamental limits to data needs in these models. What are the fundamental limits in these models? An easy question to answer. In any case, the um, Predictions has limits, obviously. Uh, I think that no one here could agree that uh, he's able to, to provide 100% of, of uh, forecasting. But uh, saying that, I'm, I have to repeat uh, the, the answer. I think that uh, the more uh, real-time data we would be able to, to, to have to take into account in, the, in these forecasting calculations, uh, the most accuracy we will get. In terms of sh medium term and long term forecasting, uh, we have to, to, to trust in the institute, technology institutes to improve this uh, kind of uh, modelization of the atmosphere and the weather performance. Okay, thank you very much. Are there any questions from the audience? Well, let me introduce myself. I'm Aisha. I'm from uh, Middle Technical University. Well, actually, uh, I there are differ uh, differences in Turkey. I have a question for one. Uh, everyone tries to forecast, but they are not trying to collect real-time data. I want data from a firm, but they do not respond me at all. Uh, to Bora, in your softwares, in your forecast, I am a machine engineer, so in your forecasts, do you have the chance to get the real data? So, and do you have the chance to compare your data? And what are you uh, on the machine learning? We have another question. How many students do we have in this hall? Well, there might be some PhD students too. Okay, okay. I'm Furkan. Well, I have a general question, actually. C plus data is effective in electrical engineering. So, in your programs, which uh, ones that you use? If you say COBOL, I think it will uh, devastate themselves. So, I mean, we have a question for Bora about the data. So, well, let's uh, have your suggestions about the programming language. We use two languages. We use Microsoft. And for the real-time monitoring, we use open source coded ones. Argun, what are your suggestions? We use Python, C Sharp, C++, and we use R in some cases, but we generally use uh, Python and C++. Ufuk, what is your recommendation? As I stated 
in my speech we are not a software firm but to have a better communication we use excel um, vba as the programming language we use python and in some cases we use r i think we should know which one to use uh, in uh, certain cases i think uh, it's very important some things take uh, such a long time to do in python so we can do it with r well um, and my response to the question is that if we cannot see the real values we cannot measure our success rate we definitely get data from our customers we get real data we get better of data and actually we can talk after the session uh, we can help you uh, in terms of data collection but in terms of data safety there might be some issues but i think i can lead the way well, actually, I'm about to finish my thesis, actually. Uh, in 2012, you said that you have started. But I think uh, in 1996, we had some plans that uh, were effective. In my thesis, I have an evaluation of a life cycle. So in this process are there any developments because literature says that the uh, power plant's life expectancy is 20 years it can be up to 30 years so i mean wind uh, towers uh, can also be effective but in turkey in terms of uh, the renewables what are we uh, on today and one of them I think is effective as far as I know but uh, about the issue that you mentioned you mentioned recycling process in the power plants it's in our agenda but uh, about its parts how would they be recycled is a very technical issue but uh, let's uh, give the speakers uh, to say something about 20 minutes and i have a question to speakers what is the current situation i mean what are the uh, values if we have uh, a good interface if we have good fightons if we say that we are dealing with machine learning do we have the chance to create a value and if you want to create a value uh, in which aspect should we do our investments into you have two minutes as i stated in my presentation we have a data flow integrated data flow you get the data from another source you have a decision making process i think you can create a value the availability of the data is the most important aspect as software we are i think on the middle and i think we have a bridging role with the within the firms I think we cannot do everything so we are doing the bridging and with bridging I think in the following years within a platform I think we will show um, automation algorithms in the intraday market and we will be focusing on algorithm mechanisms and with the help of this people won't be uh, dwelled into details and they will try to create some value and we are actually providing a service platform for them this is what we do and i think we are very close to have uh, this algorithm okay. 
Um, yeah, I think that we are in a really uh, good position right now. If you look uh, 10 years ago, uh, it was really difficult to get uh, real time in a reliable and trustable way. Right now, it's, uh, it's out of problem. It's a challenge already solved. So now we have the technology to gather data in huge amounts of, of, of terabytes. Now, digitalization, the, the, the software development for the last years, has the, the tools have the technology to, um, to program, to automate uh, really, really complex uh, algorithms. Uh, the third pil pillar is, I think, is also necessary and mandatory, which is the knowledge of the industry, the knowledge of what are the problems we want to solve with digitalization. I think that right now we have the three pillars already solved and we are able to, to, to develop uh, really new tools. Uh, yes, um, creating a value, it's a very important question for creating a certain value, we need to create a component, an integrated component. We need to harmonize all of these components. And at the end of the day, we will create a certain value. We need to know the market know-hows. We need to know the market designs. We need to know the trading know-hows. We need to integrate all of these and we will give a certain price to the customer. We will have an extra performance. The burden will be less. And at that time, we will have a created value. And with a harmonized way, if you can do the application, you will see the value. But if not, you won't see any certain value. For a, a renewable uh, plant, we need to have a design of five years. And you need to know whether any international firm will be included. And we also evaluate the rigid attitude of the international players. And if this attitude uh, will cooperate with the uh, local authority, local uh, models, and at the end of the day, if you can have a solid work model, then you will be successful. I think. Uh, in the beginning of 90s, it was all related to the integration of physical assets. But now we try to uh, need poolings about data. And actually, in this pooling process, data is included. Well, everyone's talking about data processing, but I want to talk about data collection. You are talking about the hardware, probably. The technical uh, service that is provided is very important. In the Western Europe, it's in the level of technician. Technician collects the data, engineers do the uh, revision. But in Turkey, we do not have a semi-qualified uh, staff to do it. So. The data that you get, you start with five or six percent of uncertainty. So, uh, in your uh, forecast, you see a uh, ten uh, ten percent of uh, imbalance, for example. But it's not related to you. It's all related to your staff. Your staff should be experienced. And about the forecast, when I look at the literature, you know, uh, deep minds five uh, persons of StarCraft uh, team, uh, you, you know, there's a strategy that is developed and they uh, actually have beaten humans. But uh, an energy generation software has an imbalance rate of uh, 10%. So it's not about the uh, data itself. We need to integrate it into the software in an accurate way. And I think the software firms 
should have experienced technical consultants and they need to develop these uh, products by the consultants. I have experience. I um, was a graduated from Bozic University from electrical engineering and I there are some differences in Turkey and other countries. You get the data and there are some certain results. But in other countries, if we have a prediction of 5% of imbalances, what is your uh, system design uh, in terms of the uh, imbalances? But in Turkey, imbalance is such a wrong thing. But we know that imbalances are a part of the uh, forecasting process. And actually, I also realized that in the modeling process, I deal with data processing by 90% when I'm doing the modeling. And in other countries, we know that they work in data for at least six months. You need to work on the data. I think it's the most important aspect of modeling. You need to have correction on the data so you can have a good modeling. But an expert's opinion on the data is very important. We are publishing some energy data. One of the professors said that your uh, data is false. And the professor was a very experienced one. But he said that it's not on the trend. Uh, but we said that it's uh, a different day in Turkey. It's uh, one of our feast days. So that's why it has changed. We, we explained him, but he didn't understand. He thought it was a false one, but actually it was an important one. Before calling it a false one, we need to understand what uh, is true in terms of data. Well, the question was that what should we be focusing on? In five years, I mean, if I want to have an application on your firm, which topics should I focus on to have a chance to work in your firm five years later? Well, I think we just shouldn't focus on specific topics. We should f focus on many topics and our mistake in Turkey is that when the customer comes say that please uh, handle whole uh, process by yourself but this is such a wrong uh, application and I think in Turkey we couldn't get the expertise level that we desire and we try to do some forecasts this is our main focus. I think Ondar has a very good example. They wanted uh, to uh, have an algorithm in terms of data collection. I shouldn't be dealing with this. If they are the experts in this field, I should be cooperating with them. If there are lots of experts in the financing, I shouldn't be dealing with the financing. I should be cooperating with you to do my part better. So I don't know which specific topic will be more important, but I think as Turkey, uh, we uh, shouldn't say that I do it all by myself. We should cooperate with other firms. And if we do not cooperate, we will just be conflicting with each other and we will not succeed. And in some sectors, we know that uh, there are lots of conflicts in firms because they want to do a whole process by themselves. And what algorithms might be in use in following years? Well, as I stated, we are focusing on the artificial intelligence and in terms of the nature of the project, we have different algorithms. 
we have neural networks. We have smoothing networks, for example. These are the classifications. While doing the production forecasting, we have six different steps that we use artificial intelligence. We do not use each algorithm, uh, the same algorithm in each stage. This is important. Well, this is not the case. We cannot say that we should focus on this programming language. We cannot say this. We cannot have that kind of recommendation. The requirement is that if you do not know any programming language, and if you want to learn any programming language, I think you should learn one of them. The most important uh, point to mention is that you shouldn't use any ready-made ones. Uh, you should be focusing on an uh, open sources. I mean, to be a software developer requires more than that. It's a very complex process. So to my younger colleagues, try to construct everything by uh, your own. Well, students probably w will not get the importance of it before graduating. Uh, this is the nature of being a student. Actually, I had a lesson about uh, Python with five lines of codes. Uh, I think this is very interesting because five lines are not enough for anything in the previous years. but. These years, everything has changed. In the energy sector, digitalization is on the forefront, but this time it's m more disseminated on the base. It's more rapid. But uh, everyone focused on the price forecast. But about the predictive uh, maintenance, uh, actually, it gained more importance in the recent years. M maybe there's an integrator here because uh, the data should be integrated, plants should be integrated. I call it as a matrix model because there are lots of feedings from other sources. And when we look at the international examples, for a competition by local and international agencies to have a good competition we need to have uh, good data and I would like to thank you for your attention and um, uh, thank you for your attention and patience <laughs>